Hey guys, I'm Zach Parrish. I uh, am currently the head of animation at Disney on our upcoming film, Big Hero 6. Uh, I just got an opportunity to join Anim Squad uh, and do a workflow demo. So I got to talk about my process from video reference, blocking, blocking plus, spline, polish. Kind of got to talk about the whole thing. Uh, I had a really good time. I hope you enjoy it. So give it a look. I just like FK for the eventual process of polish, even though that kind of contradicts itself just because it's harder to polish FK arms, but at least then you're, you're going to get the, the, connective, the, the connectivity of the arms to the body. I, I, like to keep, I like to touch as few controls as possible. Um, eventually I'll go in and I'll plus some poses with Benbows and stuff like that, um, but my first pass I, I won't do a ton of hands, and I won't do, um, just because I, I like to keep it IK feet, hips, hip swivel, chest, arms, neck and head working stepped because I like poses. I like offsets in poses. I don't like offset in time because it's not predictable. So people will animate one thing and then offset the lower arm from the upper arm by a frame to get drag. It, you're not making a choice at that point, in my opinion. I'm kind of looking for uh, hips or contacts. So this was this was apex of hips going up, and it was kind of apex of generally apex of foot at the top of its Y arc. Um, what will eventually be my Y arc, which looks like this right now very clear. This will be like this. And every once in a while as I'm blocking it out, especially once I start breaking this down, I'll switch to linear just to get the, the general impression of what my curves are going to look like. I'm pretty good on most of this stuff. You find yourself later, even though you had it on your video reference, shifting some of those poses and later in the timeline? Uh, I don't shift poses too much uh, in time. Mm -hmm. I will shift the pose itself, loosening, loosening up that head just a little bit so that it isn't just symmetrical face, boring shapes, you know. You can get in there and just push it around just a little bit. And get, uh, that's not what I wanted, sorry. Get this guy down a little bit. This guy up just a little bit. Nice. Cool. I'll break stuff up as well. Like I mean, nat naturalistically, my hand was angled backwards. You know, I'll probably I'll break that wrist just to give it kind of a nicer flow through. I don't I don't tend to like overdo that. Just trying to noodle these. You know what? Let's cheat. Cause who cares, right? The knee has got to move. It's popping right there. Stamp it on the frame before. Move it where it needs to go. Gets a nice arc for itself. And we're back in. Wonder. No. Something's going on my, with my with my curves in here. They're getting they're getting wobbly. I think it's probably the the weakest part right now, <laughs> which I, I I gotta fix. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so you're just kind of getting like the, the looseness but like the connectivity of like the, the muscles and all that stuff working through the arm so that e again each piece has its own weight to it but that's my, my big thing is uh, shaping the lids to support the eyebrows pointing the direction. 
So if I, if I were to point this way, you can then shape this stuff. Let's go back to this one. A little bit more. You know, we're not, we're not exactly the same, but I think, like this, I think is a way better performance than that. Um, I like the double beat, you know, all that jazz. So my thinking here, what I'm trying, is I just know you're going to fail. I'm thinking I'll, I'll probably have to do a full-on shape for just, but if I in between the two, and I can sort of pop the jaw closed a little bit on those breakdowns that I'm getting for free, and just do a little bit of that curl and tuck in on the corners, I'm hoping that'll be enough to give me that just without it popping unnaturally. Something which I didn't used to do, but I've started a lot, is I'll uh, jut the jaw out or pull it in quite a bit. The guy that we mentioned before, Tony Smead, he does that a lot. Like his his facial animation has such a different quality to it, and I the more I studied it, the more I picked up on like he's getting some of that because he he does stuff like that, and it's true like you can do it so incorporate it and if there's just a little thing where rotating an X doesn't give it to you it, it, it's definitely something I try a lot of it is taking out junk that the computer gives you it's, it's a really tricky thing with eye darts because you want them you want them to read but not be noticed so much. It's just a matter of like something you feel unless you're making a definitive statement with it. Um, and if, like in, in my case, in this case right here, I feel like it feels forced because it's so close, which I kind of did say I want to I want to make an eye dart there. I just know you're gonna fail. I'm not a I'm not a thumbnail guy. Yeah. I always I'll do even even if it's like a hand on a table. I, I haven't done a shot like that in a while, but I'll shoot reference for it. I'll shoot reference for everything. Um, we've got cameras at our desks, um, and I'll just if it's a small thing like that or just a quick facial thing, I'll act right into the camera at my desk. But just like I, I just did a shot at work recently where. I did a bunch of takes, my, my buddy did a bunch of takes, and I didn't even open the reference. That was good enough for me to make decisions and look at that. Uh, I didn't sit here and block out looking at the reference like I usually do. Uh, it just depends on, it's just to get my head around the shot a lot of times. Physical stuff, definitely, and when I'm looking at like mainly the eyes, like these little darts. You can go way too crazy with eye darts. When he saw Tangled, he was like, man, that looks, it looks different, and I, I don't know why. I can't put my, f my finger on it, but it feels better to me, and I think a big part of that is because we, we really took the time to put all that appeal in every single facial pose that we could. Um, and I, it, we always come back to the benefit of having Glenn there with us. Uh, just because he, that's paramount in his mind and those guys' minds back, back then. But now that we're not drawing the face in CG, I think that gets, that gets sort of pushed to the side. Like, oh, I have a pose page. I have this rig that's going to be on model. Done. And there's really a lot that goes into every, every facial pose, as you can see. Another thing that's always like, a big struggle, I feel like, in, in the appeal is how much teeth you're showing. So that's, that's just what I'm doing here is like experimenting with that. Yeah, I'll rotate them or do whatever I have to do to just get the graphic line that I want. Um, on Ralph, we had those, we could scale them in at an angle to get that like iconic uh, grimace that he had. Whenever I'm doing that, though, I see a lot of shots 
where you can uh, you can see that happening. You can see the teeth animating, and I they are like attached to bone, so you kind of want to hide that. And you know, at some point, you're going to have to close your mouth for a consonant. So I just use those points to sort of transition the teeth.